Stugatz here for Zip Recruiter. Does your business have any New Year's resolutions? Here's an important one every business should consider. Make your hiring process more efficient and effective. This year, let Zip Recruiter help. No one has done a better job of transforming how you find the right talent than they have. Zip Recruiter posts your job to over 100 of the web's leading job boards with just one click. Then, Zip Recruiter actively looks for the most qualified candidates and invites them to apply. They even review every application to identify the top candidates, so you never miss a great match. That's why ZipRecruiter is different. Unlike other hiring sites, ZipRecruiter doesn't depend on the right candidates finding you. It finds them. No wonder 80% of employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate through the site in just one day. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. Find out today why ZipRecruiter has been used by businesses of all sizes and industries to find the most qualified job candidates with immediate results. And right now, our listeners can post jobs on ZipRecruiter for free. That's right, free. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash Dan. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash Dan. One more time, try it for free. Go to ZipRecruiter.com slash Dan. Don Lebertard. He is now eating it out of my hand like a yeah. grazing animal or something. Yes, oh, he is yes, showing they're... love. Oh, 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 eat the picture. Oh, yes. Yeah, swallow. No, he's not you. swallow that. Stugatz. What just happened there? I finished. You just threw out a slobbered piece of my face no, on that the was just, floor. That was just a slobbered piece. Back in. I got a weak stomach, man. Tear me off half of that stew. I want to get involved. Oh, no. No, no. Uh, no, 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 no. There's no I way you can do kidding. it. The fact, the fact that you're holding <laughs> I think I'm kidding. I'm not kidding. <laughs> if he eats that piece of <laughs> if, I already ate the piece if of If he eats that piece of If he eats that piece of I will vomit. This is the Dan Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. Oh. Sports Center, Mina. ESPN Sports Radio Center. is presented by... You put, it under some, you put it under some other papers to trick me. By the way, you have missed the hard network out twice. You're two for two today. And there's someone on Twitter who does a Greg Cody clock count. Got to be careful with that whole, all of that. This is uh, bullying. Clock count is what I said. Um, you're two for two right now. Yeah. I'm, I'm still getting sunk up. Suck. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. Guests on the Dan Lebitard Show appear via the Shell Pennzoil Performance Line. And now your Sports Center update. Pac-12 referee Chris Coity and his crew have been the target of threats and harassment by Kentucky fans after the Wildcats' 24 to 23 loss to Northwestern in the Music City Bowl. Pirates infielder Josh Harrison, in response to Pittsburgh's recent trades of Andrew McCutcheon and Garrett Cole said he would prefer to be traded if the organization intends to enter a rebuilding phase. And finally, Stars announced a John Wick TV series. Ooh. Though he's confirmed as an executive producer, Keanu Reeves won't take the lead in the potential series. Mm. Instead, The Hollywood Reporter reports that he'll make an appearance but won't star as the project exists side-by-side with the feature universe. For all the latest headlines and information, tune in to SportsCenter on ESPN Radio all throughout the day. All right, Adam Schefter, NBA expert, going to join us here on the Shell Pennzoil Performance Line. He'll take your phone calls, NBA questions only, 786-456-4837. We'll ask the obligatory NFL questions uh, for you guys, for the callers. Uh, you can only ask NBA questions of Adam Schefter, 786-456-4837. We're going to mow through calls. And what that means is you have to ask uh, answer ask your questions fast, and Adam needs to answer them faster. Okay? Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Uh, but, Mina, you want to start with the football question? You had something on Mike Tomlin? Uh, Yeah. My, so, Adam, Mike Tomlin's obviously in the news today. People are asking questions. I guess some of the fans think oh. he shouldn't be that coach anymore. I personally think that's kind of preposterous, but I was wondering what you thought. He's not going anywhere. They're not making a change. Mike Tomlin is going to be the coach of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Again, some of the decisions, some of the things they have to work on are obvious to people, but the fact of the matter is it's not the Cleveland Browns. They don't change coaches in Pittsburgh every few years. They they do it every couple of decades. And so Mike Tomlin, again, you want to get rid of him? Who are you bringing in that's more appealing than Mike Tomlin right now, who's better than Mike Tomlin right now on an organization that doesn't change coaches. Not happening, you know. With all that said, though, the play calling in that game was it was awful, Adam. It just was. I know that's not your job to give opinions on the play calling, no, but... No, 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 but, but, but hold on. That, listen, Mike Tom is the head coach, so it comes back to him. But he's not calling the place. I understand. He's not calling, he's not calling the place, okay? That, that's other people. And again, I, the, the bigger issue that I have with that team is Mike Tomlin sitting in tone talking about the Patriots. 
Mike Mitchell talking about the Patriots. Le'Veon Bell, night before, tweeting about the Patriots. Hey, you're playing the Jaguars, right. and, 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 they, and, they, and they embarrassed you early in the year in Pittsburgh. How about showing them some respect? And you can talk about New England all you want once you win that game. But until you win that game, to me, New England should not be mentioned. That's me. All right, Adam. Uh, you're a GM. You have to spend your 53rd spot on one of the two kind of guys. A seven foot guy, seven foot five guy solely to block field goals or a four foot five guy who's blazing fast who can squirt through the pile. That's a good question. His name is Squirtle. Uh, four foot five speed kills. Speed in the NFL is invaluable. And even that seven foot five guy, he could jump straight up, but the kick could be to the left or right of him. Oh, so speed, wow. Wow. I didn't. Wow. That's why he's the best in the business, Mina. So glad I am. That's why he's good. You're good. Shefter, you are good. You are good. I did not even think of that. Uh, Adam, real quick, uh, be, 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 before we get to these NBA calls, we have thousands of them. Seriously, people are uh, lined up to talk to you. That. I love that. I love that. I know. I know. That's why, that's why we're bringing you on every week to do this. We, uh, the audience loves it. You love it. You love this, right? The NBA calls more than you love the NFL stuff, don't you? Well, no. The NBA, the NFL is my job. Right. And I love my job, but right. I've been doing my job 28 years. Right. And the NBA, the yeah. NBA is my professional vacation. A little variety. Um, exactly. All right, so Adam, real quick. I found this interesting, man, and I found it to be wrong, to be quite honest with you. What the Titans did with Mike Malarkey, where after he wins that first playoff game, they essentially guaranteed him an extension. They told him before the next game they'd get it done after the game. He loses that game to the Patriots, and then they fire Mike Malarkey. Two questions. Is that common? Is stuff like that common in the NFL? And did the Titans do that knowing they had Josh McDaniel signed to a contract? Well, well th- that's not what happened. That's not what happened. All, right. All they did was they released a statement that said, Mike Malarkey is our coach, and he's our coach moving forward. They didn't say, we're giving him an extension. Right. They didn't guarantee him an extension. There was a report of him getting an extension. Mm-hmm. Right? Yep. All that consisted of was one conversation that week prior to the New England game. Now, on Sunday, after the loss, in a year where Marcus Mariota has regressed again, Mm. Mike Malarkey comes out and says, I'm not changing any coaches, and I'm not going to change any coaches. Now, if you're the Titans, and there are questions about whether or not you're going to keep the head coach, and you've got a situation here where the staff is going to remain intact, and you're not going to get somebody in there to work with Marcus Mariota where his numbers in every tangible category have declined in each of his first three years in the NFL. We've got an issue, and there was an issue to begin with. And so they were giving him the softest endorsement possible when they said that he's our coach, he's our coach. They never said we're giving him an extension. They never said we're guaranteeing him. It was, hey, let me tell you something. I got a call Sunday during the day. During the day Sunday, mm-hmm. you need to watch Tennessee. They're discussing getting rid of Milwaukee right now. Okay? So uh, I'm just telling you the extension talk I got it. never was, go- was going anywhere. All never. Right. Mm-hmm. All right. You sound bored. Moving on! Time to mow through some callers. Mo, mo, mo. Callers. We're going to mow through those callers like there is nobody business. Mo, 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 mo your boat. That doesn't make sense. Point through callers, buddy. NBA questions only. You ask them fast, and Schefter will answer them faster. How about that? Let's go to Sid. Sid, go ahead. You're on with Adam Schefter, NBA expert. Coach of the year, who you got? Coach of the year, who you got? Mm -hmm. Coach of the year right now. Uh, Right now, Brett Stevens. All right, Jonathan, go ahead. Mo! Jason, is Jason Kidd the problem in Milwaukee? Listen, I don't know. They got some young talent. Takes some time to get together. I don't know if these are the problems just yet. I'm not ready to go there. Ryan, go ahead. Fast. What would you do to fix the magic? Boy, that, that that's unbelievable. I mean, they've got some issues. I think I trade Vucevic right now, and I go with Biombo moving forward. Get what I could for Vucevic. You're a veteran like him. Uh, they got some parts there that have some value, and it's just it's time to start rebuilding. Kevin, go ahead. Faster. Will the Bulls make the playoffs? Ooh. I like the Bulls. I think I think they got a chance to eke it out. I'll say yes. Ty, go ahead, Mo. You got the most All Star votes. Who are you choosing first? Uh, I think. Well, mm, uh, Kevin Durant. How about that? 
That's a pretty good choice. Let's go to Wayne. Wayne, go ahead. Mo. When are the Kings going to make the playoffs again? Uh, the Sacramento Kings will make the playoffs sometime in about 2023. Let's go to uh, Mason. Mason, go ahead. You're on with Adam Schefter, ESPN's NBA expert. Mo. How much longer will the Spurs be around? The Spurs? Yes. They're not going anywhere. They're, they're like the Patriots. They, <laughs> they, they never fade. All right, let's go to uh, Nate. Nate, go ahead. You're on with Adam Schefter. Are the Cavs going to bring? Are the Cavs going to move that number one pick to bring in another superstar? I, I don't see them doing that. Like that's a valuable pick for the future, particularly if LeBron's leaving. You got to hold on to that pick. That's a valuable commodity, and they should be able to win with what they've got right now. Unless, unless, quick follow up to that. Unless LeBron gave them some sort of assurance that they would that he would stay there long term, then you use it, right, Adam? But he, but he's not doing that. Exactly right. You are good. You are good. Let's go to Paul. <laughs> Paul, go ahead. Mo, fast. Go, Mo, go. Chris Stapp's Porzingis, question mark? What about him? I mean, listen, that that's the future in New York. It was a great pick. The Knicks got maligned for that pick. It was the right pick. That's Phil Jackson's lasting legacy. Reed, Mo. Reed. What do the Hornets need to do to win? What do the uh, Hornets need to do to win? That's a boy, that's a tough one. Um, I mean they got some talent there. It's it's that's not it. Kemba Walker, Nicholas Batum. Dwight Howard, Michael K. Grogan, they should be winning more than they are. I don't have the answer to that. I'm not that good. <laughs> Let's go to Jake. Jake, go ahead. You're on with Adam Schefter. Mo. Will New Jersey ever get another sport? Will New Jersey ever get another team? Will New Jersey ever get another team? <laughs> who's, who's holding their breath for a team in New Jersey right now? <laughs> <laughs> First one didn't work very well. Let's go to Drew. Drew, go ahead. You're on with Adam Schefter. Hockey style fights in basketball. Go. What, what was I, hockey I, I, style? Ho- hockey style fights in basketball. Go. Yeah, haymakers from Aaron Afala. We love that. We got confrontations in the Clippers locker room. Trevor Ariza getting after it. I mean, this is getting you know Jeff Galulius right now. Let's go to Charlie. Charlie, you're on with Adam Schefter. Go. Two guys, don't yell at me. Will the Knicks make the playoffs? No. <laughs> no. Adam, I, I got I, this. I, I, Adam, I got I, this. I, no. <laughs> All right, okay, can I add on? Yes. I don't have faith. I don't have faith in them making the playoffs. <laughs> why would we? Let's go to, uh, yeah. <laughs> why would anyone? Let's go to Brett. Brett, go ahead, Mo. Brett. 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 Brett's Brett a no-show. All right, let's go to James. James, Mo. James. James, go ahead. James. James, Cam. Cam Celtics. Game seven. Who you got? Cav Celtics, game seven. Who you got, Schefter? I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not picking against LeBron as much as I have respect, mad respect for Boston. All right, Chris, go ahead. Adam Schefter, Mo, go. Slam dunk. Slam dunk Slam what? Dunk. What, what's the question there, Stu Guts? Slam dunk contest. Would you like to see any changes to it? Mm, I'm going to go with that. I, I haven't put a lot of thought to the slam dunk contest. Really? You didn't... You did, you didn't love the days when it was uh, Dominique, Jordan, all those guys doing it? Like, don't you want to see just one time LeBron, Paul George, Russell Westbrook, all these guys? All right, listen. Back in the day when Spud Webb was winning it, it was honestly a spectacle. I just I just haven't really paid much attention. Maybe that's just me growing up. I don't know. I'm curious to see if my kids would like it if I had them watch it this year. Right. And I will. All right. Uh, you're the best. I believe some big NFL news broke while you were uh, fooling around with us. I Meaning, did something happen with Todd Haley? Uh, there's a there's a tweet from Rapport that just says sources Steelers are allowing OC Todd Haley to walk now that he is out of his contract. Pittsburgh expected to have a new offensive coordinator. What do you make of that, Adam? I was expected. They uh, again were planning to move on from Todd Haley. I think that Randy Fickner, the quarterback coach, would be there. Uh, he was. I think he was going to be the guy that was targeted for the OC position all along. Adam, do you think he gets uh, hired somewhere else? Oh yeah, no. Th- th- there'll be work for him because. There are a shortage of play callers in this league, and that's sort of how it works. Wait, can I ask you a question? Did Rappaport just scoop you while you were playing around with us? Well, if that's the case, yeah. <laughs> we're sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. Way it goes. The world needed that seven. Did you en- did you enjoy what you just did more than breaking that story for ESPN? Yes or no? Uh, I, I, I always would prefer to break a story than answer right. NBA questions, but I love it. I love answering NBA questions. Well, truly, <laughs> you are. I mean, we have a thousand more calls on the board. Do you need to attend to this Haley thing, or you want to take calls? <laughs> Let's take more calls. Yes, <laughs> keep it going, yes. Roy. Roy wants to keep it going. He wants. To, do we have to love break, it. Roy? 
All right, we have to but break. You, got, you know, listen, yes. listen. I, I'm into the speed, but I feel like you're putting so much pressure on these callers. Okay, you're right. That, that's true. You're right. That, that's that we we got to let it breathe a little. Like, I, I listen, we want to move rapid fire. Okay. Like, I, it's I like know. I can't even breathe. You're right. I'm going to do it better next. I promise. I'm going to yeah. slow down, and I'm going to give everyone room to breathe next. I promise you, okay? And by the way, Mike Tomlin was just fired, too. I made that up. No, <laughs> no. More, more, I made that up. I made that up. Adam Schefter next. Don Lebertard. I feel like everything we just did was racially insensitive, and I'm good with it. Stugatz. It is deadline day. This is the Don Lebertard Show with the Stugatz on ESPN Radio. All right, Adam Schefter continues on with us here on ESPN Radio on the Shell Penzo Performance Line. Adam, I promise you, I will, uh, I will slow everything down, okay? I will slow it all down. You good with that? I like the rapid fire, just... Again, I don't think it should be suffocating, Stu. Guys, that's all. Okay, you're right. Uh, Dan and I have a tendency to do that. We do. Uh, uh, we just we just want to get as many calls in for you as possible. That's but it's all. Great when I'd, he rather, has I'd time. rather get. Yeah, I'd rather get one less call, one less call, and give the callers who are getting through the proper amount of time and respect that they deserve. All right, totally fair. Uh, any NFL news happened during the commercial break that we need to know about? Uh, or are we good? Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm, uh, Draymond Green's been ruled out for tonight. Oh wow! Look, I mean this guy. Ooh. This guy is amazing. All right, Ra, Roy, let's mow through some calls. Give it to me. I haven't done this in a while. All right, let's go out to uh, Brett. Brett, go on. Uh, go ahead. You're on with uh, NBA expert Adam Schefter on ESPN Radio. I just had a stroke. Go ahead. Hey, Adam, what's up? Uh, standing or sitting wiper? Standing or sitting wiper? What does that mean? He's asking uh, when you, well... When you go to the bathroom, standing or sitting, white. Sorry, sorry about. Oh, that. yeah. Okay, that, that, that's okay. Well, usually I like to sit. All right, I like to stand. Let's go to uh, Tate. Tate, go ahead. You're on with Adam Shefton. What's the Lakers' starting five look like next season? Ooh, good question. Spicy. Oh, I, I do think LeBron is going to wind up out there if I had to guess. It certainly seems that way, right? And then if he goes, then he could bring anyone he wants. I so. guess, yeah. Right, like huh. anybody he wants. I think a lot. I, I think a lot depends on on this Oklahoma City season. Like, will Paul George want to join LeBron James out there? I think it depends on how far they go in the postseason. But that'd be interesting. Like Lonzo Ball, Ingram, James, George, it's pretty good. Let's go to uh, let's go to Wayne. Wayne, go ahead. You're on with NBA expert Adam Schefter. Go ahead. Who is more injury prone, Derek Rose or Chris Webber? Hmm. Derek Rose. Derek Rose. Yep. Chris Webber, I don't think he's on that level with Derek Rose. No, I don't think anyone's on that level with Derek Rose. Let's go to no. uh let's go to Irwin. Irwin, go ahead, you're on ESPN radio. Are the Miami Heat for real? Good question. Yeah, it's a good team. They they, they just continue to struggle. I don't you know, listen, can they take that big step that they need to supplant a team like Boston or Cleveland or Washington? I don't think they could do that, but they're a tough, gritty, competitive team that gets everything that they can out of their uh, talent. All right, Ty, go ahead. We're mowing through calls with Adam Schefter. Go ahead, Ty. Hey, Shefty, who do you think the Cavs will pick up when LeBron leaves in the summer? <laughs> They've been there before, and it didn't work out very well. And frankly, I don't know who they pick up that can replace. There's nobody that they could do. No they got to go <laughs> use that draft pick and just keep their fingers straight. That's a big problem. If free agents aren't going there for LeBron James, they're not going there for anyone, Adam. <laughs> it's, it's a big problem. Yes. That, that's why you got to lean on that draft pick. And that's why you don't trade that pick now. 100%. Let's go to Danson. Danson, go ahead. Adam, what's it going to take for the Miami Heat to get back into championship contention? Mm. You know, listen, again, uh, props to the Heat for what they've done this season. I, I just don't see them at that level, but they're a good team. I just don't see them there. That's because they're not there yet. Uh, let's go to uh, Derek. Derek, go ahead. 40 games into the season, who's your MVP candidate right now? MVP, 40 games in. Oh. Uh, LeBron's playing better than anybody. I know they haven't won, but I, I'm not picking against that guy. I'm with you. Let's go to uh, Thomas. Thomas, go ahead. Make it free. What was that, Thomas? Say it again. Did the Met? Did the Nets make a trade? Did the Nets make a trade, Adam? W- what are they trading? I mean, they, they, they could trade anything they want, right? Yeah. Uh, so the answer is no they, on that. Well, no, no. Do the, do the, have they made one right now? No. Can they make one? Yes. Anybody on that team, the Nets. Should be for sale, right? One hundred percent, yes. Except for De- who? except for D'Angelo Russell. Uh, I to me, anyone's for sale right. on that team. Okay, All right. I'm sorry. I apologize. Yeah. <laughs> You're the NBA expert. I should not weigh Thank in with my. Thank you, 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 you for the proper respect there. I am sorry. 
Let's go to uh, let's go let's go to Reed. Reed, go ahead. You're on with Adam Schefter, ESPN's NBA better, expert. Better NBA uh, uh, better NHL enforcer as an NBA player. Draymond Green or Boban? That's a great question. Draymond Green or who? Boban. Or who? Boban Marjanovic or something like that. Oh, oh, Boban. Oh, yeah. I'm taking I'm taking Draymond. Dray, Dray, I mean, Draymond's yeah. got. Draymond's got flint in him. No, Draymond. All right. Uh, quickly, uh, quickly here, guys. Not you, Adam. Just them. Buck, go ahead. Buck, I said Roy. The Buck. Play- Will the Lakers ever make the playoffs with Lonzo Ball? Yeah, of course they're going to make the playoffs at some point in time. It'll take a little time, but they'll make it. Let's go to Travis. Travis, go ahead. Travis, Travis what do you got? Go. Well, will I, will I see make it in Cleveland? Will IT make so, it in Cleveland? Isaiah Thomas, will he make it in Cleveland? Well, you know what, you played very strong the other night. I, I think you give him that little bit of time here. And I think, yes, before the season's through, I think that team turns around. I know there's bad feelings and whatnot. Just too much talent there to think that it won't work somehow. Josh, go ahead. How many rings does Kevin Durant have in your personal record book? <laughs> <laughs> in my, well, right now he's got one, right? Yep. Or two, one. Yeah, he's and, got one. And, and he'll have, and he'll have more. He'll okay. have more. He'll get more. Right. I don't count that one because um, he couldn't beat the team, so he joined. Uh, the... No, 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 no. He, he has be... a ring. No, he doesn't. Sugas, he's he doesn't. got the ring. He I'm sorry. He doesn't. Okay, fine. I mean, he couldn't beat the team, so he joined the team to win his ring, and to me, that doesn't count. Right. Okay, I, you know, so you're going you to say that to Deion Sanders for going to the Niners and the Cowboys when he did, when in, they were good teams already? In my personal record book, he does not have a ring, yes. Okay, <laughs> well, I think he does. Okay. <laughs> Eric, go ahead quickly. Go ahead, Eric. Who would you take, Michael Jordan or LeBron James in their prime? Ooh. You know, who, by the way, who would have thought that, that LeBron James would be in his prime right now? I know. At the tip. At the tail end of his career, like this. Yes. I mean, he. You watch him now; he's unbelievable. I'll say this: the fact that we're even talking about LeBron in uh, in the same way as we did Michael, that in and of itself, we don't have to give an answer because those two guys are so gifted and so unbelievable that they belong together like that. In the same sense, that's the highest compliment you get to somebody anyway. Shafter, this was uh, delightful, man. Did I slow it down good enough for you in that second segment? Yeah, you know what? I, actually, i got to tell you something. I think I like it better with the pressure on the callers. There you go. Yeah. See, I mean, yeah. will, 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 will Let's you, get back to that. Will you make up your mind? I was just trying to tell you, man. Listen, you know the NBA, and you know the NFL, and you're a journalist, and you know reporting. I know radio, man. This is all I know in my right, life. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're all right. right. And, right. And, and listen, I, I even have a handle on producing, and I know what works. I usually have an idea of what works and what doesn't work. And i got to say, Stuka, you're – you, you, the pressure on the panic, yes. the suffocation. Yes. That's that's good radio right there. You're right. Back yes. to that the next time. All right. We love you. On, we'll t- on the next edition yes. of ESPN NBA expert Adam Schefter <laughs> taking your calls. All right. We love you. You are the best, man. Thank you for the time. We appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, guys. All right. Uh, Chris Sims joins us next to tell us how bad Blake Bortles is. Hi, this is Puffy. Do you know that my TV show, Highly Questionable, is not only on ESPN2 every day at 4.30 Eastern. It is also available as a podcast. You can listen or subscribe to the Highly Questionable podcast on ESPN app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Dan Lebatard. Yanni Adababubu. Stugats. Giannis Adababumbo. This is the Dan Lebatard Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. All right, Chris Sims, Bleacher Report, going to join us here in just a second. Actually, right now on the Shell Penzoil Performance Line, we are at number 45. Yesterday, he told us that E.J. Manuel was his 46th best quarterback in the NFL. Uh, Blake Bortles, who was playing for a right to go to the Super Bowl this weekend, is number 70 uh, on the list. And Chris Sims, who has been great with us uh, for a couple of weeks now, joins us here on the Shell Pennzoil Performance Line. Uh, Chris, what's going on, man? What's up, man? How are you? You doing okay? You holding down the fort without Dan? Holding down the fort, man. I got Mina Kimes helping me out, so we're holding down the fort, my man. What, what's up, Mina? How you doing? Hey, Chris. How are you? I'm doing well. Just, you know, another day of a 12.30 phone call into Levitard and Sugat. <laughs> oh, um. <laughs> I think you enjoy it, though, man. I think you enjoy it. I do enjoy it. I mean, I'm at the Bleacher Report office right now. I'm usually here. I'm watching film right now, and it gives me a little break to come on and uh, act like an idiot for a few minutes. There you go. Grind and tape. Hey, I want to ask you something about a theory that I put forward earlier today, 
which is that the Jaguars' offense is Bill Belichick's worst nightmare because it's so dumb he can't outsmart it. And he has to watch tape of Blake Bortles, which is going to destroy his brain. Well, you, there, there is some truth to that, I, and, and I'll say this much. First of all, you're right. There's not a whole lot to figure out with Jacksonville's offense. It's pretty simple. They want to really just line up and, like, bludgeon you to death with their size up front and their run game. So, I don't, you know, schemes are hard to stop that at times. It comes down to just, hey, can we get enough guys in there? Can we be strong enough and tough enough just to stop that? And then you're also right with when it comes to the passing scheme. This Teams like this, when they're so simple – offensively in the pass scheme, you go into a game, especially somebody as smart as Bill Belichick, and he goes, man, I got a good feel for it. They like to do this in this formation, and they like to do this on second and five and all those things, and you coach up your team on all those, and Jacksonville might go, man, we've been so obvious with this stuff at times. Maybe this is the week we trick it up or do a double move or whatever it may be. So, yes, those are little dangers you fall into when you have a really brilliant coach breaking down a offensive of scheme that's not necessarily reinventing the wheel. What are you laughing at, Mina? I'm just, I'm just happy he agrees with me. <laughs> you are, she's so happy. You agree with that, she's so happy. Uh, but, but, but the overall message from Belichick is, hey, guys, stop Fournette. Make Blake Bortles beat us on the road for the right to go to the Super Bowl. I think so, yes. I mean, I think that's pretty obvious. At the end of the day, I mean, again, look at last week. You know, I know everybody wants to say, oh, Chris, you were wrong. Like I said yesterday, the game was 28-7 to with a defensive touchdown and then an interception that led to an 18-yard run the very next play for a Leonard Fournette touchdown, and the game was 28-7, to right? Yep. Uh, right? Jaguars winning, and he was 7 for 14 with 83 yards. So, yeah, and New England has the defensive guys, right? They have a bunch Butler and a Stephon Gilmore and a Devin McCourty in the back end who the Patriots put a ton of pressure on. They are the key to that defense. They're going to tell them, play man-to-man, and we're going to put a few extra guys in the box to stop Leonard Fournette. Who were you watching tape on just now before you uh, before we bothered you? I'm, break, I'm breaking down the Eagles and Falcons right now, doing a little bit of a deep dive there. And what are you seeing? Anything? Anything you share well, with us yet? Well, yeah, certainly. I mean, you know, I, I I picked the Eagles to win the game last week. I'm patting myself wow. on the back nice. there. But but because, really, the thing that impresses me about the Eagles is just their size of their football team. They are one of the biggest teams in the sport. And, yeah, it might not be pretty, but they can just physically overpower teams. And I'll be interested to see that matchup with Minnesota this week. I think that game's going to be a very close football game, you know, up in Philadelphia, northeast weather, on a grass field. That favors the bigger, more physical team, and I do think Philadelphia is that by a hair, but they are a little hamstrung at the quarterback position as well. Yeah, Chris, I want to talk about that, because I agree with you about Bortles getting a little too much credit for last week, but I think the same is true of Nick Foles. I mean, he didn't really do anything. It was the simplest... Well, yeah, I played Matt Ryan, though. (laughs) It was the simplest game plan imaginable. I mean, it was just all screen, 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 RPO, screen, screen, screen. I don't... How Can he actually pull that off against Minnesota? Yeah, well, I think they have to kind of do the same type of thing. they got to make it an ugly football game. The, the strength of Philadelphia, like I said to you, is their size. So when they run the ball downhill with the Jaya and LeGarrette Blunt and continue to do that, teams do get scared and go, wow, they're so big, they can move us out of the way. We need to get another guy in the box, and that leads to very easy passing game looks. Yes, Nick Foles did not do anything special in that game, but he hit the wide-open receivers, he managed the game properly, and that's really that's all he had to do. Again, I said this yesterday to Stu Gatz. We have put the quarterback on such a pedestal in the NFL right now, and it's still a team sport. In fact, I've been told my whole life it's the ultimate team sport. So uh, if you have a good team around even just an average quarterback, you can do some things and beat some football teams, and this year is the most proof we've seen in recent history. Did you deep dive the Steeler-Jaguar game yet or no? Oh, yeah, deep dive. Yes, well, definitely. Well, because, uh, I mean, it, it's very interesting what's going on. Steeler fans want Tom won the lead. Todd Haley just actually left. He's no longer the offensive coordinator, and he doesn't deserve right. to be after those fourth and short calls. Um, listen, Tomlin deserves to be there for as long as he wants to be there. I believe that, but 
I do understand Steeler fans. Did you see any of this? There were some horrific calls by Tomlin and that coaching staff in the final couple of minutes of that game. Yeah, there, there definitely was, yes. I mean, they had the fourth down calls. I mean, trying to run on the edge, you know, when they didn't make it against the fastest defense in football. I yep. mean, negative, Ghost Rider. That ain't going to happen. So that was dumb, right? Yep. Uh, and then, of course, the, the biggest thing is just the onside kick at the end of the football game. Uh, two timeouts left, two eight, 218 left on the clock. Why wouldn't you punt the ball down there, put the pressure? on Jacksonville one more time to try to get a first down. You know, Pittsburgh's offense was in a pretty good rhythm at that point. But, you know, at the end of the day, yes, did Pittsburgh have a chance to get back in the game? Certainly. But I have no doubt coming away from watching that film and going, yeah, Jacksonville, like I've been saying, and how this all started, yeah. they're the most talented team in the sport. And if it isn't for Big Ben making two miraculous, unbelievable throws on fourth down, yeah. that game was in trouble of going like 45 to 7 or 45 to 14. So, um, you know, let's not lose sight of that as, as well. But Tomlin, I'm with you, Stu Gatz. He gets a lot of criticism. This is a guy that, hey, it's not easy going into Pittsburgh and going into a place where they go, we expect to be in the Super Bowl or in that conversation yearly. He's handled that very easily. He's been to a su- two Super Bowls. He won one of them. Yes, is he aggressive? Certainly. And has he made some dumb mistakes? Yes, I do think so. But it's also what makes Pittsburgh so good is they are fearless and they just, they're never intimidated. Oh, it's fourth and five, you know, screw you. We're going to throw it and, you know, see if you can stop us. So you got to kind of, you know, if you're going to live that way, you're going to die that way sometimes as well. All right, time for number 45. Who you got? Yesterday, E.J. Manuel was number 46. Uh, Chase Daniel, number 47. The 45th best quarterback in the NFL, according to Chris Sims, is... Is Blaine Gabbert, Arizona Cardinal. Wow. Wow. I always what I used to say about Blaine Gabbert is he's not terrible. That's what I used to say about him. It's a compliment. Yo, well, he, he's not terrible. I mean, I, I feel bad for the guy in a lot of ways. I mean, he went to Jacksonville there early in his career. They were a horrible football team at that point. He got, you know, just absolutely beat the crap at his time there. He does have physical ability. Um, you know, even you, you saw some of that this year with Arizona. Hey, Blaine Garrett did, Blaine Garrett did beat the Jacksonville Jaguars. He made some big time throws down the field to win that game, if people remember that. Yeah. Uh, so there is, there's some, some admirable, you know, training there with Blaine Gabbert uh, as a prospect, as a quarterback. All right, get back to work. Oh, sorry about that, Roy, with the sound there. Uh, get back to work. Uh, go back to uh, to your film session. We'll talk to you tomorrow at 1230. Sounds good. Talk to you tomorrow at 1230. Groundhog Day. See you then. 44 days to go. See you, Chris. Bye. Be good. We wrap it up with Mina after this. Don Libertard. Good work today. That was a fun show. Stugatz. It was also intergalactically stupid. This is the Dan Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. All right, fun show today. Thanks to Mina Kimes for sitting in for the entire show with us. You can check her out later today on HQ. Highly questionable. What time is the show? 4.30 Four th- Eastern on ESPN. And you'll be with uh, Poppy and Israel Gutierrez. Easy again, yes. Um, our thanks to Adrian Wojnarowski, who joined us, Adnan Verk, uh, Chris Sims, and, of course, Adam Schefter. Uh, it's been a fun show. Mina has been telling me. Well, go ahead. There are well, some similarities between me okay. and Mike Zimmer. Yeah. So I posted the the, the Flembrandt, the picture. I did use the Google Art app to find the painting that Stugas looks like. It's on my Twitter. You can check it out at Mina Kimes. And somebody, his last name's Courtney. I can't remember his first name. Replied that you look like Mike Zimmer, and I had a galactic brain head explosion moment because it's been bothering me for every time I see Zimmer on TV. I question who does he remind me of? Who does he remind me of? And when he said that, it, it was like something clicked right. in my head. Like, you really look a lot like Mike. Do we agree? Well, I know Allison agrees with you, Roy. Do I look like Mike Zimmer, the head coach of uh, the it's Vikings? It's uncanny. Mm, yeah, 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 yeah. Chris agrees. Billy? Yeah, that's a good one. You have a little Zimmer in you. I do have a some Zimmer of, in you. Does anyone have glasses? Yeah, you need the glasses. How about Roy, the eye patch? Roy. Didn't he rock an eye patch last year? Or Billy, yeah. Billy's got the glasses. All right, hold on. Okay, I'll put yeah, them on yeah, in a second. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he had the eye surgery, and now he, he, did, right? he wears like the very intense 1950s-looking glasses. Can't believe that guy's in the NFC Championship game. Not him. He's a good coach he's with great, Case yeah, Keenum. He's a great coach. No, but with I just can't believe that Case Keenum, Nick Foles, and Blake Bortles are in the championship unlikely. game. It's one unlikely. of those three is going to make it to a place that Philip Rivers has never been before, and one of those three, and maybe two of those three, are going to get uh, to the same I, place that Dan Marino's been to once. I, it's unbelievable. Dude, I'm sorry. The first take invited me. I can't help it. Okay, there it is. There right? it is. Right? Zimmer? There it is. Zimmer? Zimmer. Do Zimmer? like a do like I, a coaching move. For the, for the radio audience, I have uh I have glasses on now. Uh <laughs> oh, Billy, Mike Zimmer? 
You need like a beanie also. Oh, course, Your hair's a little course, different. Or like a, he wears a ball cap. I think. Yeah, but yeah, it's there. All right, uh, Fat Chris, is that right? Oh yeah. All right. Uh, Mina also has, and I'm with her on this one. She has major issues with the picture of herself that is on our wall here in the studio. And guys, she should. Yeah, that's a terrible picture of Mina. It is. Uh, it came up because when you were complaining about being sick, I looked over at the picture by Dan's brother, who is a fantastic artist. Yes. And I said, I look sick or high on drugs in the picture he did of me. And then I looked at it a little longer and I said, it looks like I'm chewing tobacco. It does. <laughs> yeah, there's something going on, on the right side of like your cheek. Like, yes. Like this. It's drooping. You look high. That's yeah. if if I had yeah, to pick one, like I would qu- say that. Yes. Something. Yeah. <laughs> like, what's going on with my eyes? You're high. I mean, <laughs> that's what's going on. Like, They're closed. Uh, like, it's not is, flattering. I understand what not, you're saying. This is not a take face. You're not happy like, with it. I mean, just say it's okay. You're only insulting Lebo. It's fine. I mean, the Jaguars can beat the Patriots. Like you don't believe this person when she says that. <laughs> Blake Bortles is not that bad. Radio audience, Mina Kimes is holding Sorry. a sign of herself. It's a Velcro <laughs> sign that we stick up against the wall when she's here, and she is holding it up in front of her face to see if anyone will take her hot take seriously. <laughs> but she says that as being the person that called him James Farden. Like, if that's a face of something that should be taken seriously. Yes. Uh, we'll let's update that Let's update the polls real quick. Does Stugatz actually have the flu, or is he faking it to get the praise for toughing it out? <laughs> Ninety-three percent of the audience, ten thousand votes, man. Ninety-three percent of the audience. I've earned this, man. They said I'm faking it for praise. If you have the flu, do you know it? Allison apparently does not. <laughs> just- Allison thought she had the flu. What she had was the symptoms of someone who had just quit coffee. <laughs> Unbelievable. Eighty-five percent of the audience says uh, yes. Does Dan love Stugatz? I haven't clicked on this one yet. I'm interested here. Was that your suggestion? I think I asked it early in the show. <laughs> Does Dan love Stugatz? How do you think this is going to come back, Billy? I think he loves you. Yeah, but what do they think? Eighty. Uh, they I'd say eighty. Yes. No. Eighty. I'm going to say no. I'm going to vote no. Sixty-seven percent of the audience said yes. Oh, seems low. I love you too, Dan. I love you. He was massaging you last week. I love him, man. I really do. Except for the text he sent me at one fifteen this morning <laughs> and sent another one every hour. Sync your accounts. Get them sunk, Dan. Oh, I wanted you to do the hard network out.